ladies and gentlemen, interesting ideas in a, a changing and oftentimes a chaotic and difficult world. I'm Stan Houston. We are here to try and help you make a little more sense of what is going on in life and in business and perhaps in your own situation. And at the same time, see if we can't uh, live better, maybe live smarter, be a little bit smarter even than the stuff and the machines that we have. And in the midst of the mess, find a way uh, to have more love and peace and joy in our life. Love, peace, and joy in our life. Uh, that's what the program tries to do in some way, and uh, we'd be glad to uh, help you do that as you help us do just that as we share together. It is uh, the 14th of December, just a few miles from uh, my uh, studio here in North Carolina, a city called Fuquay Verena. Fuquay Verena. <laughs> a French name for a town in North Carolina, and uh, have a good friend there. We actually uh, established an initial presence there, and the story is now about a, a, a brave teacher who literally talked a 12-year-old boy out of uh, his gun. He'd fired it through the window, and uh, she bravely comforted him, encouraged him, and got the gun, the true heroes. Uh, you'll hear more about that. And that reminds us, though, this is the uh, commemoration. It's hard to say the anniversary, but uh, the commemoration day of the terrible Sandy Hook uh, school massacre. And uh, we think about that, and ironically, we just did a radio program on uh, is it possible to forgive people who do such terrible things? Is that possible? And uh, we may talk about that. Uh, my good friend David Chotka, who is doing a program with me called More Power to You. It's on how to better understand uh, the power that is available to us through the Lord's Prayer. And uh, we have a conversation on uh, if you forgive, do you have to forget? And do you have to make it all right? Or what can you do? Um, that might be an interesting idea. Also, uh, the idea of uh, you being a performer, uh, what has made the news is that, uh, in effect, uh, one of the uh, coaches of the uh, Mississippi State football team, Mike Leach, uh, 61 years of age, a really <laughs> remarkable character, uh, has a... Uh, passed away due to heart surgery complications. And the interesting thing about him is he not only was a, quite a coach and a, an old-fashioned, old-style coach, but he was quite a, a performer. And uh, that reminds us oftentimes uh, that you always have to be a bit of a performer and an entertainer. And that's why I suggested to you that we'll t talk about perhaps the Paul Newman memoir about being an actor or performer. See all these things that we can do and define dementia. And I was just uh, notified by my wife that uh, the Neurology Association, which uh, she uh, gets involved in, in their uh, book, Brain and Life, there is a book now called Navigating Dementia. And so when that seemingly is approaching or you're involved in someone who is in that stage and state navigating dementia. Those are things uh, you might want to check out. Again, if you want any more information about these things, just reach out to me at uh, stanhousted at gmail.com, stanhousted at gmail.com, and uh, we will go from there. All right. But that's not the subject for today. <laughs> the subject for today is a positive one. Could it be? that all in all, it is a bit of a friendly world. Can you believe that? Would you believe that? Well, let me just share with you a brief story about the fact that uh, it might be good for us to believe that we live in 
a benevolent universe. We live in a good universe. Let's see what we can do with that in the next few minutes. I'm Stan Houston. The program is Interesting Ideas for you, for me, and from you, and from me uh, in our changing world. And that program begins right now. Well, here we go. Yeah, you heard me do a deep sigh. <laughs> because, you know, there's just a, a number of things that uh, are tough right now for all of us. And uh, we wonder, you know, <laughs> what's going on? And as someone pointed out, uh, there's a, a, a series in which one of the characters who is just going through a terrible time and uh, he finally gets down and screams and says, won't anybody listen to me? Won't anybody listen to me? Will anybody pay attention to me? Will anybody think that I have anything worth to say? Does anyone care? Will, not any, will anyone listen to me? Again, go back to some of the work by my friend, uh, Pastor Richard Rohr, and uh, uh, he introduced me to uh, another gentleman, Satish Kumar, and uh, he's uh, an educator who studied both the Eastern and Western religions, and he says uh, re something like this. Now, you just think about this. We live in a benevolent, well, that means good, benevolent universe. The benevolence of the soil is endless. It helps one single seed to multiply into millions of seeds for hundreds of years, producing colorful, aromatic, juicy, and delicious fruit. Feeding birds, bees, humans, and animals, the tree celebrates the benevolence of the soil and becomes benevolent in return, offering its fruit to whoever is in need, without condition and without judgment. And it's free. <laughs> the benevolence of the sun is beyond the capacity of our words to describe. It burns itself to maintain life. It provides conditions for photosynthesis for the whole plant kingdom to nourish itself and give nourishment to bacteria, yes, to insects, to birds and mammals. <laughs> Even the dead moon is benevolent. It maintains the cycle of life and cycle of time. Time and tide are sustained by its presence. <laughs> Rain! <clears throat> Rain is benevolent. It delivers itself to every farm, field, forest, mountain, and human habitat free of charge without needing any external source or supply of energy. It moistens the soul, quenches the thirst, fills rivers, ponds, lakes, and wells, and in partnership with the sun, it feeds the world. Air! is benevolent. Can you imagine what would happen if we got charged for breathing? <laughs> we breathe, therefore we are. Air is related to the spirit, to inspiration, even to spirituality. Air is breath, the breath of the universe, the breath of God. Air in the Sanskrit of India, air itself means life itself. Space is benevolent. All and everything is held in space and by space. All movements, all changes, and every kind of dynamism are sustained by the stillness of space. We always need to be mindful of reducing our clutter and maintaining spaciousness in order to be detached and free. Space is good for you. Space is benevolent. 
Soul is benevolent. Compassion, kindness, generosity, and inner light, inner luminosity are the qualities of the soul. Mind, intelligence, and consciousness are held and processed by the soul. The soul is the seed of life. Feelings, emotions, sentiments, intuition, and reason pass through soul, and they're manifested in the world. And may I pause by saying, that's what we were talking about yesterday, why as things come into you, you need to get outside of yourself and express them and share them and teach them all the time. It is not only humans who have soul. He thinks, at least my friend here says, animals, birds, insects, and microbes may even be a part of soul. Soil, trees, rocks, and rivers. What are they? Are they truly dead? Or are they just simply the remnants of some kind of soul? Now, I confess, I have a little problem with that. I'm not sure. Because mankind is very different. <laughs> Humankind is very different. But I also know that the older I get, the more I see in animals and nature and just the way the world works, I understand that it truly is a benevolent place. And one time I remember I was dealing with a young man who had had a rough life and I was working with his boss to try and help bring him up to speed so that he could be in a leadership position. And he wanted to so well, but there were always things holding him back. And uh, after one of my sessions, my good friend uh, Mark, a real wonderful man, and one of the first people to trust me as a performance coach, was said, well, how's it going with Jeff? And I said, Jeff is working hard to believe that there is goodness in the world. What happens to happen to Jeff is he has to find, discover, and come to the point of believing that there is a great benevolence in the world. Jeff got closer and closer, and he may have ever made it, but uh, that attempt to help him better understand that both in me and in his boss and the people that he worked with that there might have been a touch of kindness and benevolence in them certainly helped to change him and certainly helped him become what he is, a very successful businessman today. The world is how you see it and what you make of it. If you look at the world with benevolent eyes, the world reciprocates with benevolence. If you project suspicion and self-interest, Guess what? You get the same in return. Trust begets trust. Fear begets fear. Recognizing the benevolence of the universe is not to deny, and here we go, the shadow side. But seeing nature as red in tooth and claw and people as selfish and greedy sometimes makes us respond in a similar vein. If we sow seeds of malevolence, malevolence will grow. If we sow seeds of benevolence, benevolence will grow. Some interesting ideas. I'm Stan Houston. We'll be right back. I read that about three or four times before I read it to you. And I'm going to read it three or four times more. By the way, I would suggest 
that uh, on this day, you know, there are dark, we, we, we remember Sandy Hook. But in the midst of that, we also seek to find that somewhere there is that amazing grace, that graciousness, that benevolence, someplace, somewhere, sometime. And we need to continually seek it and share it with others. So I would just encourage you to do that if I can be of any help to you. That's what I'm here for, stanhouston at gmail.com. stanhouston at gmail.com. And uh, tomorrow we skip right over and we're going to talk about just exactly that. All of this is not to admit that there is a shadow side to the world. There's a dark side. In fact, there is a shadow within you. And I'm going to change it in two ways by saying there's also perhaps a shadow in you that you might need to think about. But there's also a part of me that will claim that there may not be anything wrong with you, but you might be in the wrong place because actually you have a shadow career inside of you. And perhaps it's time for you to give up the career you have and actually embrace your shadow career. Just let that sit on your head for a while. Best and blessings to you on this day. And uh, just uh, say today, I'm going to seek and look for uh, acts of benevolence, signs of benevolence in my world today. In the midst of Christmas comfort and joy and crisis, look for the grace that does abound and is amazing. Best and blessings till next time. I'm Stan Houston, Interesting Ideas. Recommend us, please. <laughs> Refer to us, please. And of course, uh, let us know how you want to be a part of this uh, ongoing conversation. Take care. Bye for now.